spent about a year uh, doing casting sessions in the UK, in London and in Paris to try to find really the best actors for the main roles. And uh, that, that was really important because we were not just looking for someone um, to give us his face or his voice, but we were basically looking for the full actor um, because then their face is scanned with a 3D scanner, so it's really their face in the game. We recreate the body exactly at the same size and the same height and everything. And then they come on set to uh, shoot the motion capture animations. Uh, so we do all the walks, all the interactions, all the dialogues, pretty much everything is shot. Here what we wanted is to use the system in a way um, that would give us the possibility to have actors truly play like if they were on, on a movie set. So they spent a lot of time with David Cage, the director, and uh, Steve Knibeli, the assistant director, to make sure that when they come on stage, they know what they have to do. You're not gonna kill the Antichrist with a revolver, Nathaniel. He's much too powerful for that. Antichrist, my ass, get the gun out of my face! Lieutenant Blake is gonna leave the planet right now and return to the realm of shadows. Creature of darkness, I do beseech you to return to the realm of shadows. They have a full script and uh, we spent um, days and days and months uh, just rehearsing with them to make sure they under fully understand uh, the story their character and they can deliver the performance we accept from them. You know, very often in games you need a good performances for cutscenes, um, sometimes for dialogues, but here it's different because we were really, uh, we really needed this level of quality in the performances pretty much in all the game. You have to absolutely know it, and not just know it, you have to know it backwards and forwards because the way that it's, it's done, when you get to one of these choices and you have those moments, uh, you have to know all of them very well because you have to get to that point and then go to one, get to that point, then go to another, get to that point, and then go to another, or maybe just do all three in a row, and they're all very different, but the points of departure are the same. And so preparing for that was really quite intense because, again, I was, I was working in an imaginary world. To prepare myself for this particular role, I went to, there's an institute called the, it's called IGAP, and it's um, an institute of analytical psychologists and I went to a few seminars and specifically to do with forensics and forensic psychology. And if you don't relate to the characters, if you don't feel empathy for them, if you don't believe in what they say and how they feel, then the, the, the whole experience would just fall apart. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything. As lead artist, the first and foremost part of my job is to create a character from an actor and not only make a faithful copy of the actor, but also give him as much personality as possible through 3D design. It means that we use the existing actor as a basis, and then we try to make the character fit his part in the game. Quality, fucking wonderful, man. Shit, I, I'm glad I'm not me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to meet me, man. Technologically speaking, we focused on very specific areas. We worked very hard on high-level characters in a way never drawn before. We put all our energy into having the best character rendering and animation. For instance, we made very realistic effects for rain and tears on characters' faces. Our main aim was to set a new benchmark in terms of realism in character rendering, and I believe that this is one of the main differences between Heavy Rain and other games. We had thing we had before is just lifting his head a bit down on the end of the animation. So this is something we change to make the loop even more discreet so we don't see the repetition. The player is able to move the head's character. So this is a way to give the control of the character to the player. And this is also a way to introduce some um, behavior really that, that are not mechanical, that are not loops. We break the cycle with putting something that moves uh, completely outside of any loop. It's random, it's dynamic, it's uh, real. If the player uh, leaves the character alone for uh, three seconds, uh, a really short mob, uh, the character is gonna uh, take a, a new pose. He won't stand in, in its basic regular stand pose as any, anyone do. Each actor is gonna choose some of the uh, some attitudes, some be behavior uh, that he usually have, and this is uh, some details that, that really brings a lot of uh, 
um, detail on who is the character, what is, what is he thinking about. Another aspect of our job is to create facial animation and thus to really give life to the character. It's a moment when we truly work with the actors. Shooting facial mock-up with them in order to give life to the character's face to make it talk and act in accordance with the situations. Dad, <laughs> hey, Dad! take it easy, you're gonna knock me over. Uh, so this is your big day, huh? Am I grown up now? Hmm, 10 years old, that's not exactly grown up, but you're getting there. It wasn't bravery. It was love. That telling stories, you know, this is probably one of the oldest human activities since language exists and, and writing exists. I mean, people tell stories and people like stories to be so told. So, could you just give me a name for the camera? Uh, my name is Pascal Langer. Uh, what is the text that was given to you? I have uh, Norman Jaden and Ethan as well. Sean may be dead in a few hours. He, he, he wants to test me. He, he, he wants to punish me for Jason's death. I, see, I, I'm, I'm the one who, who, sh who should have died. I, I, I wanted to save him. I would have done anything to give my, my, my life for his blood. I, I couldn't. <laughs> not, not a day goes by that I, I don't see his face. <laughs> Now, Sean has got nothing to do with that, no, nor do any of the other children. I, this has to stop. You've got to hand yourself into the police. Look, if, if I hand myself into the police, I lose all chances of finding Sean. They'll question me, but, but I won't be able to tell them anything because I don't know anything. I don't know what happened. Ethan, you may have killed those children. You don't know what you're capable of. You must end yourself oh, in. I have to save Sean at all costs. He may be a, a prisoner somewhere, and I'm the only one who knows where. If, if I have to face up to all these trials to prove to myself that I love my son, then I'll do it. Ethan, it's crazy. You have to hand yourself in. I'll hand myself into the police when I have found Sean. Now, don't... Promise me, you, you won't inform on me until I have found my son. I'm 25. Mm -hmm. I've been modeling for five years. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mean to get into modeling at all. I was scouted on the street. I was shopping with my mom. The last time I saw him, he was watching a convoy of trucks going by. I was about 50 yards away. And he suddenly turned and looked at me. Locked on my eyes. And I didn't realise what was happening straight away. I heard cries from behind me. Everyone started running in slow motion. I just remained motionless, locked on his gaze. I hadn't noticed the detonator in his hand. Yeah, Leon or Kinder, PFT. Can you tell me a bit what you've done recently? Um, the last thing I did, I did a thing called Richard the Lionheart for the BBC. Cora confessed. <laughs> you beat him all night to make him talk! He would have confessed to Kennedy's assassination if you asked him! Your confession is a heap of shit! Corder is not the origami killer. He's a sick child killer. But he has nothing to do with the disappearance of Sean Mars. We have lost time for nothing. And all this time that continues to, and all that time, it continues to rain. According to the weather forecast, we've got less than 12 hours before we reach 7 inches of rainfall. And we have the remotest idea where Sean Mars is. So, this is where you work? Disappointed? No, it's just very different from, from what I imagined. How do you become a private eye? Well, I was a cop for 20 years, and one fine day, my wife decided to run off with them. You know, so... You, you should see all the faces of the husbands when they first discover that I know that they have a mistress. It's like...
The mall scene is the central scene in Heavy Rain, the one where everything changes in a matter of seconds. It was extremely important for me to have the player playing the scene and the first scene in Ethan's home. We could simply have shown the scenes in a cutscene, but the player would have not felt implicated in the same way. Playing a scene or merely watching it completely changes the player's relationship with the story and his identification with the character. So it was imperative for the player to experience these scenes with Ethan rather than just showing them. The player doesn't just know Ethan's history. He has lived it with him, he knows what he lost, and he feels the guilt. The scene is really quite simple. The player loses his son the first time, Jason. but quickly finds him again near the clown. Jason. When Jason disappears a second time, we change Jason. the animations for Ethan's movements to make him look more panicky. The calm camera at the beginning of the scene becomes a handheld camera. The Jason. music increases the pressure on the player. We use the same Jason. mechanisms as film to create the dramatic tension in a classic Jason. manner. This sequence is the perfect example of what every sane video game developer avoids like the plane. It lasts about five minutes in all, but it took us almost two Jason. years to develop. Managing a crowd in which the player can move freely means managing around a thousand passers-by at the same time. We had to use a lot of tricks to get around the technical constraints. To optimize the calculations, the game program masks all the passers-by that are not in sight while continuing to simulate their movements and their animations. If the player turns his head very quickly, the paths of the crowd members remain consistent, even if they have not been displayed for a time. Then, all that remains is to bring the camera closer in in order to increase the agonizing impression of being with Ethan. Here again, classic movie directing. The accident scene is one of the rare sequences that I storyboarded before filming it. It is quite a complex sequence with a lot of things happening at the same time. There is Ethan coming out of the mall, Jason who is lost, the car coming. By using three windows, we could tell these three stories at the same time and lend a particular style to this scene. The player loses his son in this scene. Everything that happens is his fault.